done yet. So we we'll say, oh, we are live. Uh -huh. That was fast. There we go. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Um, we have with us tonight Lisa Masters Key, who is Aaron Shane Key's mother. And she will be speaking to us about who he is, what happened to him, and just share her story. And we hope that it gets out there. We hope people get interested in picking it apart because from what me, we have heard, um, there's just definitely something more going on. And I hope that you guys will agree as Lisa tells us about it. Um, there are some things in the beginning. These are families on here. Um, no bashing. We will not put up with it. I don't care what these people's stories are. I don't care. I don't, that's not the point of this. So if you're going to be rude about it, um, I just suggest you leave now and make it easier on everybody. That would be great. Um, we here, our goal is just to get people to share her story. Um, she is from Tennessee. So if we could get a wider range outside of Tennessee to kind of take a look at it, that would be great. That's all we are here for. Do not give us tips or leads. If somebody out there, that's what we're hoping for is just that one person that is willing to come forward. Do not give them to us. Do not give them to Tennessee. Please, please give them to the Washington FBI, right? That. Yes. That, that's the place that we feel comfortable. Or even if you don't, that, then d talk to Lisa. They can reach out to her. She will let you know the yeah. best place to go. Yes, so, Washington, D.C. Is, is, uh, is the place to go. We just want somebody outside the realm to take, you know, to take a look at it. Yes, we do. Um, we, Yeah. And it will be linked in the comments. Um, there will be a comment linked. And Lisa also has a group for Aaron instead of, if you guys are interested, like I hope everybody will be, um, go to the group because that's where you're going to find all the information and everything that you need to know. And Lisa will has been more than willing and she has been answering questions. She just really wants to get the word out there. So join the group. It will also be pinned and she has a GoFundMe to help her try to just get that outside opinion. So um, just don't be afraid. And the safest place I would feel is your group, right? To just, oh. just go there and, and you can find out all the information you need from there and everything will be pinned to the comments. Well, the, you know, everything, uh, all the information in, in there, but, uh, the uh, large amount is there's a lot of it we've have have to keep to ourselves right <laughs> as they hear about this case they will say rightfully so <laughs> rightfully so because it's it's crazy and um i don't think aaron is the only one i lost the and sound i hope that we can oh, oh we hear you are you there yeah, I'm here. Are you? I can't hear you. <gasps> no. You want well, me to exit and come back in? You can try that. Um, honestly, as long as they hear you, you, you can try that real Let's quick. But as long as they hear you, we're here to listen Shit, to you. You hear me now? I hear you. you I hear can't me? hear you. Yeah, just try to exit out and... Hold on. I'll come back in just wait a minute. It says I'm backstage. Me? Oh, I'm on the show now. Are you? Can you hear Still me? Still can't hear you. Is it, okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> when Lisa gets back, she's going to come um, back. And I just think the biggest, the biggest thing and what gets people connected is just not so much putting pictures in a group and words to it. I think what people get drawn to are the people behind these stories. I'm back. Yes. Okay. 
And I just think a big part of that is we get emotionally invested. We need to understand that this could be our mother, sister, brother, uncle, aunt. And I, I just think getting to know the people behind the stories um, makes a bigger impact, would make a bigger impact. So, and I think everybody deserves the spotlight and that's all we want to do here is give a shareable source to anybody who is willing to do what Lisa is doing tonight. So that you can just start by, if you want anything that I just, I just think people need to get to know Aaron a little bit more before what happened to him. So anything that you would like them to know about him? Oh, very happy. Baby. From what you told me, he was just. Aaron had. Uh, he, nice. was, he was. He. He was a great guy. Uh, he, you know, he had his brushes with the law. He wasn't. He wasn't a choir boy. Uh, most of his brushes were me either. Either. He was usually taken up for other people. He didn't like to see people picked on. He respected his elders and. Worship the ground children walked on. Uh, he and Aaron was, has kids, does he not? He has, yes, he has two. Uh, that now don't have a father. And it's not been easy on them. Uh, it's not been easy on none of us. You know, it's bad enough when you lose a child. But when law enforcement and the judicial system makes it worse. The trauma, it's, uh, it takes it to a whole new, whole new level. But anyway, uh, Aaron, he fell in love with a girl when she was younger. She was great. I knew her parents. Went to school with her mom. Her dad attended the same school. He was just a little, quite a bit older than I was. But, uh, Aaron was, he, he loved his kids. He lo loved family. He moved heaven and earth for family. Uh, he wouldn't let nobody mess with his family. Uh, oh, no. Loyal. He, he knew what loyal was. Uh, he knew the importance of family. We were all close. Now, not to say that we didn't butt heads. Oh, sure. Aaron was a big, big man, 6'6", 245. Him and his sister shared a bond that uh, they were almost like twins, just born five years apart, five years and a week apart. And uh, her, his sense. birthday was April the 21st. Lanessa's was April the 28th. And, uh, of course, he got killed 16 days before his birthday. But uh, Aaron was very talented artistically, mechanically, he could sing. Uh, there, there just wasn't nothing he couldn't do. You show him one time and he could do it. Um, I have a sibling like that. Uh, his gifts were really, really incredible. He could also, he had also started tattooing and uh, a lot of people use his drawings for tattoos. And, uh, He'd gotten a bad wreck, messed his foot up years earlier. Actually, he saved the girl that was with him, kept her from going through the windshield. He held her. Oh. Um, he would, he was given. He'd give you anybody the shirt off his back, do without himself. Of course, hey. at his size, you know, you've got a, he had a target on his back because of his size. And I always told him, I said, son, people don't fight people your size. And But everybody wanted to try him. And I've seen him have to rough them up a little bit, bring them in the house, feed them, put them to bed, never think nothing else about it and be great friends. He didn't hold grudges. And, that is uh, not an easy thing to do. He, he, was, he was more forgiving. Yeah. probably than anybody I've ever seen in my life because I mean, you know, he'd have problems with his ex, you know, his baby mama kids. But at the end of the day, I believe they would have made it back to each other 
for you know to their kids because they had a they had a fire between them that was it was instant. I, me and him actually worked on a road job in West Tennessee together, and that's how him and her met. And she is four foot eleven, and he is six foot <laughs> six. And that little gal, she would when they argued, they would get in each other's face. But they, you know, it was like gas on fire. But yeah. the spark, you know, the you could see the fire, the attraction in their eyes, and. Uh, both the kids look like him. Looks like they're going to be tall like him. But, uh, you know, my goal is six one, and I think every one of his kids are going to be about as tall as he is. <laughs> I am 4'3". You're 4'3"? Yeah. How so you I, can, I can see that so perfectly. Perfectly. 4'3". Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't even imagine. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, Aaron, he ended up, I, I, you know, I grew up in Salina, Tennessee. Blessed to grow up there. I walked to school when I was in kindergarten. Uh, you didn't have to worry about nobody stealing your child. No, heck, we we were allowed outside until the streetlights came on. We knew yes. we knew then it was time to get home, and not, not today. Yeah, and, uh, you know, when Aaron started, he started telling me a lot of stuff that was going on about four months before he died. He talked to me generally about once a week. But I had, uh, at one point, right before he started talking a whole lot again, I hadn't heard from him in about three weeks. And I'd put a message out on Facebook if anybody up there seen him, tell him to call his mom. She was worried. Yeah. So, and he called me. But uh, he started telling me about things that were going on out there. And it was things I couldn't imagine going on because of how it was when I grew up. Uh, he had spoke to me about being approached by Russell Cox and uh, another gentleman about kidnapping young girls in Nashville. And bringing them back. They knew Aaron went to the doctor once a week because of the foot he had injured in the car wreck. I mean, once a month. And uh, he said, Mama, what should I do? And I said, call the law. And he said, one of them is the law. And, you know, that's, I, no, that's no joke. Sex no, no. Child it's trafficking. Not. But that's the, some very serious stuff. And then he started talking, telling me about, you know, that they were selling meth out there. Now, this place, when I got married in 76, my husband had told me I knew where Turkey Town was all my life, you know, because I grew up in that area. But he always told me, he said, if you ever have a problems with the car or anything, do not stop at this house. People disappear. They die there. Is a known drug house I know since 70, but 70, it was before 76. So, uh, when I found out Aaron was out there, I, I begged him to leave. I, I said, It's just not good. And he said, Well, mom, I can't stay nowhere else because nobody will let Karen come in. Karen is a thief. I mean, she's went through her family, everything, and, uh, he loved her. He thought he could save her. Yeah. He had a savior complex yeah. when it come to female. I can relate to that very much. And, uh, and I did. I, I, I begged him. I said, leave. Leave that girl alone. He just couldn't do it. Uh, then you just see the person that you've seen before and you just hope that you can reach that person. Well, the young, uh, Karen had been through a lot, uh, especially when she was young. Her dad was hurt real bad in a tractor and trailer wreck, uh, stayed in a vegetative state for years. And as far as I know, I don't think Karen ever went to visit her, and I think it weighed heavy on her. Yeah. And she found her escape in drugs. 
Sure. As, yeah. uh, as a lot of people do. I mean, she's I, not. I, I myself can relate to that to an extent. She was, uh, she's a beautiful young woman. I mean, beautiful. And I could understand physically why Aaron cared for her. I, I could. But her personality, she had a dark yeah. personality. My daughter had actually met her and saw her hit Aaron in the mouth at his brother's and tell him she was pregnant. Mm. And uh, Karen had two children already of her own. She, uh, I know one of them belonged to Lonnie Scott. Uh, Lonnie had threatened Aaron several times, you know, that he'd kill him. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, Lonnie, uh, from what we understand, uh, his car, he was, the, his car was at the scene that day. It took me nine months to find out what, whose car it was. But anyway, back to, uh, eight days before he died. Yeah. Yeah. He had called me and we were just talking, but he called me from his dad's cell phone and, uh, we were talking back and forth. He said, uh, mama, he said, I think I've got into something I can't get out of. I said, well, I said, just leave. He said, he said, I can't. They won't let me. I said, who won't let you? He said, the law. And I, I said, Aaron, what are you doing? And uh, he said he was trying to help his cousin. She got a manufacturing charge. And the detective had actually told me that that was correct, that she had. And... Uh, he said, Mama, if something happens to me, he said, you call Overton County Sheriff's Department and ask for Detective Derek Sidwell. And I said, Aaron, are you working for him? And he said, yeah. And I said, Aaron, oh, my God. He That's said, I've got to try to help. He said, I've got to try to help my cousin. And I told him, I said, she wouldn't help you. He said, Mama, he said, I know she wouldn't. He said, but I've got to do it. So uh, he had, uh, uh, that was on Thursday, eight days before he died. Well, Friday, he went out to a friend's house, Bobby Kirk. I used to babysit Bobby as a, as a child. And he'd asked Bobby if he could come out there and stay. And Bobby told him he could stay, but Karen couldn't. So uh, they went back out. Out to Hacks at 293 Turkey Town Road in Hillham. And uh, he told Bobby, he said, you tell Mama if anything happens. He said, tell her I didn't do it. And tell her that uh, to not, not to give up on it. I didn't do it. She said, don't let them get away with it. So, uh, oh, wait, uh, hang on just one second. You are fine. Yeah, but he's. Can you hang on one second? Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm just letting you know I'm here. Oh, I've seen you. I, I, uh, I wasn't sure if I had to unmute you for mine because mine was showing up, but now it's gone. I'm new. No, to this, I can. I can do it. Okay, it was, I'm back. Oh. Okay. Uh, but, uh, of course, we didn't know about what he had told Bobby till after the fact. So on uh, Friday, I had been to Nashville to, to the doctor. I was headed back. Uh, I was about 50 miles from home. And I don't know. I had a real hard pain hit me in the back of the head. Hard enough I had to pull over, stop for a few minutes. Went on home, got in the bathtub. This call come in, and I missed it, and then it called again. And I took it because it was from a 9-3 area code, and I thought it was Aaron. And uh, it was one of his friends. His name's uh, Bojan Williams. He said, Mama. I said, yeah. He said, uh, Bub, Bub's gone. Big brother's gone. So what are you talking about? He said, he said, rabbit's gone. 
That's his nickname. And uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he hung himself. I said, is he okay? He said, no, Mama. He said, he's gone. I, I fell out of the bathtub. And I hung up and I called his daddy. And his daddy had told me he was gone. Uh, his dad had took him. He had left. I had took him over to his dad's at his uncle's early that morning. He was just done with Karen. They fought down there for two or three days. Uh, on the second, he loaned Russell two hundred dollars, paid his rent to have for the room for him and, Karen, him and Karen. Well, when Hat dropped him off over there, he told him to come back around five o'clock, and he try to have his $200 to give back to him. So he spent the day with his daddy uh, and his uncle and his first cousin. And uh, around five, it's about five to five, his dad said, uh, he asked to take him back down there. And his daddy drove him down there. And uh, when he got out, he told he walked around the truck, Asked his daddy about what he thought about his shoes. His daddy didn't like the shoes he had on. <laughs> it was just a little pair of brown tennis shoes. Uh, had on a real tree baseball hat as a new hat and a uh, long sleeve thermal shirt and his jeans. But he told his daddy, he said, uh, he kissed his daddy and hugged him, told him he, he loved him. He said, Come back and get me in 30 minutes and take me to Livingston. So his daddy left and uh, went back to Big Aaron's. And at about 25 after 5, they said, 25 after 5, maybe 5.30, somebody called. I can't remember the lady's name right offhand that called uh, Aaron's cousin yeah. and told him that Aaron was dead. Well, uh, Wayne Stacy, which is my husband's cousin. And all of this happened in a span of. No, it couldn't have been no more than 45 minutes. 40 minutes yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, Wayne drove his daddy back down there. And uh, Aaron was laying on the ground. And uh, they never let his daddy near him. Uh, they ID'd him with his driver's license. Uh, they, uh, that had to be so difficult. I could, I... Well, his daddy stood there for three and a half hours, and uh, there was a crowd there of Crystal Goosby, Russell Cox, Hat Cox, Erica Freeman. There were over nine people there, wasn't there? Yes, and there were nine to 11. Uh, I can confirm nine. Uh, the other two are just a little shaky, so I don't yeah. name them a whole yeah. lot. Uh, but uh, they uh, like they kept everybody out on the front porch. They never separated these people, is what his dad said. They took a statement from his dad, wrote it down. And we got to actually read the step the statement. My daughter, me, and another lady went up and seen their evidence. And uh, I, I can't remember the exact time the 911 call come in, but they declared him dead at 6.15. And uh, he laid on the ground up there till nearly one in the morning. For what reason I do Which not is know. Crazy for a suicide. I don't. I don't know. But that just uh, that just well, sounds crazy for a suicide. Well, the big the district attorney was there. Uh, Bright Dunaway, Randall Slayton. He was the one that took the crime scene photos. Uh, and I know of Derek Sidwell. I was also told there was an officer Shane Barlow was there. As well as a couple of more, but I'm got not naming them. No, I whatever. I would never, this is such a tricky, slippery. Yeah. I would never well, want you to. You know, they. That, I'm going to say what I want to. Yeah. I, 
I haven't got anything anybody can take, sue me. It's going to be on them to prove I'm wrong. Yeah. But and anyway, they would have to drag everything out. There you go. When they don't want that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, I, you know, that night, uh, I didn't go up till Monday night. Oh, uh, this was on Friday. And, uh, I called the funeral home, made arrangements. They had ordered a full cranium autopsy on him. And, you know, I had the weekend to set and make peace that he had yeah. took his own life. And at that point, I believed he did. Well, sure. And, uh, sure. we, uh, I got up, the, uh, I told the funeral home to call me, uh, when they went to get him. So I, when they called me, I went, drove the 280 miles up there and uh, got there late Monday night. And I'd ask his daddy what happened. And he told me everything that he knew had happened. Well, I never was contacted by the officers. No police officer ever contacted me. Uh, so what I was hearing was just what was scattered around, you know, yeah. but I start, I got a call from a young lady. She said, you don't know me. She said, give me two people's names to talk to. She said, they can tell you what happened to your son. She said, they killed him down there. Okay. So Tuesday morning, we went up to pick his stuff out. And um, his dad, his first cousin and me picked his things out. And they walked outside to smoke. And I was standing there talking to the mortician. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. I'll never know why. I asked if I could see him. And... He said, can you handle it? I said, I don't know. I said, but I got to try. Oh. I don't think anybody out there, I think every mother out there can understand that. I walked in, I had him turn the lights up. When they pulled the sheet back, I, I couldn't even tell it. It was him. The damage to his face was, it. I, I mean, it looked like hamburger meat. Um, Unrecognizable. He had a cut that went from between his eyebrows on his right eye, down through his eyelid, uh, past the corner of his right eye. And the meat just folded down on his cheek. His eyeball was ruptured. His nose was broke. His face was just cut all to pieces. He had a diamond earring that had been ripped from this earlobe. He always wore. Uh, just, and at this time you, you were under the impression that it was a suicide and that yeah. did not sound, but, that doesn't sound but like. But the damage, the the damage, they tried to say the damage was done by two week old puppies. 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 Weeks old puppies. Yeah. I've been around a lot of weeks old puppies. Yeah. But uh, I looked for the rope burns on his neck. I, I looked for anything on his neck. I couldn't find nothing. And I'm thinking... You know, this ain't something's not just right, you know. And I asked, you know, because I'm his mother, I know I'm not objective. And I get that, you know. But right. Aaron was 6'6", 245 pounds. This is a And big... if anybody sees these pictures, where, where this picture, it's in your group. If you guys Yeah, there's the a lot. Yeah. And you see this this area. There To me, I mean, there would definitely be markings. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. see what went. I, I I turned and I asked the mortician. I said, I said, do you or can you find any marks on his neck? 
he said, I can't. He said, in my 25 years, he said, I've, I've never seen a hanging like this one. And uh, he said, but do you know if he is in a fight? I said, I don't know anything. He said, it looks like he put up one hell of a fight. It sure, yeah. So uh, after we picked his stuff out, while we were there, actually, there was a guy that was at the scene. He was outside the house showed up at the funeral home. I didn't know. My, my first thought was, how did anybody even know Aaron was back? So uh, he wa got out of his car, walked into the funeral home. And I guess where he didn't see nobody, he turned around and walked back out. Well, uh, we left and went straight out to Hack Cox's where it ha happened at. I walked in the house, looked around, and told him, I said, if Aaron's got anything here, I want it. Yeah. So uh, Absolutely. Uh, I walked out to the shed where it had supposedly happened. It's a shed where you park, like, farm equipment in, like big tractors. Mm-hmm. And it's got the big wooden beams everywhere. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, this one's about 16 foot high. Yeah. That's my estimate. It could have been a little less, but not much. But anyway, what they had told me was that him and Karen were at home there at Hacks by themselves. And that they had got into it. He had slapped her. She flew across the couch and hit her head on the table. Well, I couldn't see. There was no place in there that she could have flew across the couch and hit her head. So first Does that off, even that sound like anything up. Aaron would do? No, no, no. Now, uh, like now, Aaron would smack you if you if you walk away and leave him. He he wouldn't, but he would smack you. He has smacked. I mean, you. I'm not gonna tell a lie for him. No, and honestly, uh, but no, anyway, I walked out there and I'm looking. I looked up and. uh I looked over where it had supposedly what is supposed what I was told he done was he had grabbed her by the hand, drug her outside, and said, "Here, you're gonna watch this." And this is where it goes south for me. Uh, he climbed up a pole. Uh, the where he had the the step, the only step that was there was about roughly 34 inches off the ground because I've got a 34-inch inseam, and it was just right even. So he stepped up there, climbed up the pole, held on with his left hand, reached out roughly between four and five feet, threaded the rope through by a piece of tan with one hand, tied a slip knot, come back down, and then jumped out and hung himself. So uh, it didn't make no sense. It, right at that moment, nothing didn't make no sense. No. They I said mean, that he had uh, all of his, he had two suitcases. They had put his two suitcases out there in the shed with him. Everything inside the suitcases was soaking wet. He was soaking wet. They had went through all of his clothes and stole a lot of his clothes. And, uh, while I was standing there, Russell come walking up. Now, I knew Russell when he's a young man. He was married to Aaron's cousin, Becky. So this they family had, is very known to you guys. You know, not just through Aaron's connection, but you know this family. Yes, yes. I mean, Russell, I could remember when Russell, Lord, he was such a good-looking young man. He had a good job. He worked. About the only thing he'd done was drink a little bit. And, you know, we we got danced together at bars. He was the type of man, look you dead in the eye. You could believe whatever he said. But uh, Becky had got on crack, and he beat the tar out of Becky over it. And when he walked up to look at me, I didn't recognize him. I bet not. I'd heard, you know, Aaron had told me what they were doing. They were taking wall spray, spray it on screen wire, and shock it with jumper cables, and they were selling this stuff 
to people. It acted like meth. It done everything like meth. But it would drive body temperature so high that people would seize. And Aaron wouldn't, didn't want them to sell it, and he voiced his opinion. He tried to keep them from selling it. But uh, It sounds like he was starting to bump heads with a lot of people. Oh, oh God, it just... Like I said, on the third, he'd been out detailing a car. Come in, and please, I hope there's no small children in, in the, that can hear this. When he no. walked through the door, Karen was going down on Russell for dope. I Aaron, Aaron tried to feed her habit, and I'm not going to sit here and say he didn't do it because hey. he did, but he, him and drugs... I'm a firm believer. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. Yeah. But uh, the crack and stuff like that, he had done it. Uh, I, I, as far as I know, he'd never done any heroin. Uh, he had a needle phobia. He got that from his mama. <laughs> I don't like needles. Oof. But uh, I have a sister like that. She will pass out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or you go into f that fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. But uh they, you know, like I said, uh, what Karen said happened when we, you know, well, let me, we'll wait a minute to say that part. Uh, yeah, because that, yes. We'll, uh, when we got Wednesday evening, God, we, we didn't know how the funeral home had agreed to let us make payments for it. And God bless, there was so many up there. Uh, his funeral's like 80 eighty two hundred something dollars. And by the time we buried him Thursday, they we didn't know but twenty two hundred dollars. It was amazing. I mean that my family, awesome. uh, his daddy's family, uh cousins. But uh on Wednesday night during the Wednesday when visitation started, the undertaker come out and said, Karen had called, which is girlfriend, said she wanted Aaron cremated, that they had been married in an Aryan Brotherhood ceremony. And they let her out to call the funeral home. So I called the detective and told him, I said, she don't need to be calling the funeral home. And he said, well, I'll take her phone privileges away. Now, I had a girl that was in jail with her, said that they told her to call the funeral home and that they wanted her wanted him cremated and i i couldn't cremate my child i can't there's just no way but anyway uh there was quite a few people there on wednesday night and uh my, uh one of uh bud his cousin the one he'd spent his last day with there his daughter and her uncle had to leave to go back to lebanon Junior had stage four cancer and had come up to see to Aaron's uh, visitation. When she went out in the parking lot, she was leaving. She saw Paul Sullivan, Crystal Gooseby, uh, Rufus, and RJ arguing. And she said that Paul said, why did you do this? Why did you guys put this family through this? She told him to shut the fuck up. He didn't know what he was talking about. Rolled the window up and left. So that's twice Paul had come to the funeral home. He was wanting to say, tell something. I because it. I yeah. had no idea who he was. But uh, none. All these people in their interviews said how much they loved Aaron and they cared for him. There was not there wasn't not one of these people showed up at his visitation or his funeral. Uh two of his friends, Bo, the one that had called me and told me that he is dead, him and his girlfriend showed Which is up. So odd for a suicide. And yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, in the calls at this point were just coming in. Call this yeah. one, talk to them. They know what's happened. So uh, after the funeral, I went back out hacks because uh, I was looking for a fight. I ain't got no lie to tell you. I Erica, 
Erica was laying on the bed. She was dope sick. You could tell by looking at her. But I was in there just long enough, my nose and my eyes started burning really, really bad. And it was from bleach. And I didn't think about it. It didn't dawn on me, you know. Because at that, still at that time, while we were under the impression that he had died out in the barn. Yeah. I already knew he didn't do it because he didn't have no marks on his neck. They didn't even have to put makeup mm. on his neck. But his face was damaged so bad. Well, he had a broken had nose. He Cuts, contusions. There's nothing the, that would be consistent with the On the autopsy, the uh, the, it was described the damage to his face as blunt, was Post his myoid in his was intact? No, right? no, all of that was intact. Uh, uh, he didn't have a tiki eye. He didn't have a swollen tongue. He did no, his hyoid bone no. was intact. The carotid artery was fine. There was no damage to the to his neck here at all. And, and you uh, guys would just have to see. Like I said, go to her group. She does have a picture. Uh, I don't have the. I don't have the photos. I have pictures of him in his casket. Uh, Aaron, Eve, they done the best job they could do. But they had to borrow wax to build his face. I, I, it sounds like it. it and uh, you can look at him. You, you'd swear it wasn't the same man. We had to put, his eye was damaged so bad from the cut. And they had to put wax in here because his eyeball was deflated. Uh, you know, you can... You can just see the damage. You could see where it looked like a fight. He had been, oh yeah. You could see where he had been hit with brass knuckles. You could see it. But anyway, uh, you know, as time wore on, we had things coming in. You know, people started sending me messages and messenger to people I never knew. People call me on the phone. Didn't have no idea who they were. I would pass the information on to this detective. See, I'd lot left up there in the 80s, and I didn't know anybody in law enforcement up in the area except for a, a, a police officer in Jackson County, which was Nick Carter. Uh, you know, I'd been gone. There wasn't nothing but heartache for me up there, and now there's a lot more. But uh, so I wouldn't have known Detective Sidwell at all, but uh, a few weeks ago, I found out I actually went to school with his dad. But anyway, uh, it's a small world. I started, you know, I would send him the information people were giving me. And, you know, because that, you know, try to help them. Uh, oh, because yeah. people, you know, people don't really want to talk to police officers, especially if you're a junkie. Yeah. And uh, uh, the a lot on of the other side of them, a lot of the information. I knew was from people that were still getting high. So I, I would write it down and just keep it. And, you know, if you had several others come up with the same thing, then it lend, lend credibility to it. Yeah. But, uh, uh, we, uh, took six months for the autopsy to come back report. Uh, my daughter had to buy, the one we got, they did the Overton County didn't offer us one, and uh, ridiculous. I called and I spoke to Mr. Sidwell, and uh, I said, Well, I hope your report says more than mine does. We went through it, and he says, I will tell you, I am waiting on a five page report that's supposed to be coming on the rope. I have this in a recording. I have ever text that came between me and him, every single one of them. So uh, when we uh, we made arrangements, me, Lanessa, and this other lady, to go look at what the evidence they had, and uh, now before you before you went, what when go back to when you went out to. To the to the 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 scene, and uh, what did you find out there that they left behind? 
Oh, well, now this is this is a this come a uh, actually on. Uh, let's see, we buried him on Thursday, on the seventh of April. A friend of mine had went out there, and they left the upper portion of the rope hanging on the beam. Uh, Aaron's hat, bloody hat. Now, this hat was brand new when his dad dropped him off. Uh, his blood-soaked hat was laying there. You could tell the blood was soaked from the inside out. Uh, there was a liquor bottle and some other things. And you have well, all of that in your possession right now. I do. She uh, videoed her brother taking it down. Hack was there when she done it. And she come over to the house that night. And uh, there had been a police officer chase her in the driveway in his private vehicle, scared her to death, pulled a gun on her. And all the guys that was on the porch, this is before I got there, run out there to see what was going on. Well, he jumped back in the car and left. He told her who he was. Well, she parked the truck and she had two bags of stuff. One was on one side of the truck. One was on the other. She couldn't lock the door. The one bag of stuff that was on the driver's side, they got. But the rope, the liquor bottle, the hat, and a couple of other things have been in a bag sealed up ever since. And I'm like, why did they leave this stuff? And as time wore on, I, I'm thinking, why? Why? Mm -hmm. So after a while, I come up with the conclusion was, I might be wrong, but I don't think. I, I believe. I believe they left I, it. I 100%. They knew Aaron's DNA was not on the top part of the rope. I think they may, uh, I don't, I think the hat, since it's being camouflaged, it was easy to believe yeah. into the scenery. Uh, and you know, the liquor bottle is going to have, uh, it's going to have DNA and fingerprints on it. Mm -hmm. I, I've touched it one time with gloves. Uh, so anybody other, I don't know that the person that took it down had gloves on, but yeah. I do know who it is. And they will say they were the ones that took it down. I have the video to prove it. So uh, I asked him why, and he come why they left it, and he come across was something about uh, they didn't need that much of it or something. Okay, so Which is cool. well, they should have. The, no protocol was not followed down there no. to start with at all. I mean. Uh, his dad was there. His dad should have been the one to ID him. Yeah. Uh, they left Aaron's body unattended. Uh, while they were interviewing all these people, they uh, recorded uh, Crystal's interview. They recorded Russell's. Uh, Sidwell was heard in both of those, but they never separated these people. No. And it was there was a crowd supposedly showed up all at once. They took care of the jail. They really never secured anything. No, no. At all. They, uh, how it sounds. They, took, they took Karen to jail as soon as they got there. Uh, she was blowed out of her mind. They tried to talk to Paul Sullivan, but Paul, they said, was uh, hysterical. So they didn't interview him. As far as I know, they never interviewed Paul. Uh, then, uh, God, I probably got this stuff all out of order, but we are gonna. That's why we. That's why I told you we we should sit and we should because there's no information out there. I mean, no, understandably with a case like this, we can't even find a timeline. We, so we're really we want to just sit down and give everybody well, the, a timeline. Well, you know, uh, it's sort of hard to put together. Yeah, I mean, but you know the thing. We, they did let us uh, go to go and see the interviews, listen to the 911 call. Uh, we got to see it all except for the uh, their portion of the rope. We got to see the crime scene photos. Uh, 
but like I said, there you know was three if they of still them. Have that portion of the rope. Uh, the a part that was around his neck. Yeah, they had now. I you know, I'm assuming they still have it. It's evidence because I was told I could have his wallet 30 days after he died when I met with the ter- with Detective Sidwell. Uh, I had saved a question to ask him when I seen him face to face. And I went to the Overton County Sheriff's Department and we met and we talked. And I told him, I said, Aaron didn't do this. Uh, because I'd done been to- I told him what he had told me. And I looked at him, I said, uh, Aaron said he was working for you. I said, he give me your name explicitly to talk to if something happened to him. And uh, I said, was he working for you? He leaned back in his chair and he grinned real big. I mean, big. I'd classify it as a smart ass grin is what I would class it for as. Mm. And he never said yes and he never said no. He told me what I needed to know because CI files are confidential. Can't me, you, no. we, the DA can see them, the judge. That's it. They're sealed. And uh, he knew I couldn't get to them. But uh, after we had seen everything during the time when I started seeing the crime scene photos, the crime scene photos of uh, Randall Slayton took great photos because they clearly showed Aaron didn't have no marks on his neck. The rope was hanging about five or six inches away from his neck. But what I noticed, uh, the clothes that had been returned to me from the funeral home, which is the ones he was wearing when he got there, weren't the same ones in the crime scene photos. He had on, in the crime scene photos, he had on a white short sleeve t-shirt. He was laying in the dirt. Uh, didn't have a spot on it nowhere. His belt was undone. His pants were undone. He had on a pair of knee-high lace-up snake biter boots uh, that were completely unlaced. Now, if he'd been up there flopping around and stuff, he, those boots would have come off his feet. Yeah. So uh, Karen had told her little story that, uh, you know, he made her go out there and watch her. And she walks with a cell phone in her hand, the 911 operator on the phone, walks down the road 100 yards, knocked on the trailer's door where Hannah was. Hannah come to the door and she said, here, you talk to him. And she, uh, Hannah on the 911 call, you could hear her say, oh, there's six of them up there fighting. <sighs> So that right there derailed everything they had told us. They told us nobody was there. And when the law got there, Aaron was all, he was on the ground. And they never seen him hanging. They never seen him hanging. Never. And he was laying on his left, left side. Uh, His arm was sort of pulled back under his body. And his right arm was like on his hip. He was in a curled up fetal position. You could see the cut on his eye. There was, you could see smear like. I mean, and that's pants. just a natural protective when you're protecting yeah, it. Yeah. You yeah, just want to curl up in the fetal position. Exactly. And the more you look at the photos, you could see where his nose was broke. You could see smeared dried blood across his face. You could see the fingers where it had been washed off. But this white T-shirt he had on and him laying in the dirt didn't have a spot on it. We didn't get the white T-shirt that was in those crime scene photos. He had on the shirt. They sent back to us and it was soaking wet. The boots were soaking wet. But Karen said in her testimony that he swung out. She got him to swing back to that rail and uh, he got his foot hung in some wood. But 
And then she said he swung back out and she couldn't get him back in. I mean, he's and got one foot time. out there, but she said all the time he was pushing her off with his feet and hands. And it's They're a just, natural instinct. If you hang, yes. you're going to pull on that rope. Whether, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't no scratch marks on his neck from his fingernails. And his hands were abnormally white. They were abnormally clean. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I didn't think about it. But later on, I was told that a guy named Mark Al. There had been a fight broke out in the kitchen at Hacks. Uh, Aaron had asked Russell for his money. I don't know what was said, but uh, him and Rufus. That's what he got, initially went there for, right? Yeah. yeah. Rufus, him and Rufus got into it. Aaron knocked Rufus's front tooth out. He walked to the front door, asked Hack for his money. And Hack just grinned at him. And, you know, Hack was a smaller man. He's shorter than I am. And Aaron leaned down. He had a habit, if he was taller than you, he'd lay down and put his forehead against yours and look dead in your eyes. And I don't know if he accidentally knocked Hack down, if he intentionally knocked him down. But Hack looked up at him and said, big boy, you fucked up. Russell's going to kill you. Russell come out of the hallway, hit him in the back of the head. He went to the floor. He was hit the second time, which I believe is what opened his face up yeah. and done the damage. And I believe that's probably when he died. Uh, he was drugged downstairs in the basement. Uh, Russell, Rufus, I was told little Mousy Daly, Mark Allen, Paul, and, uh, RJ was there. There's a couple more. The, some of them were Norman Bowles. That's the name I was trying. And was then there. a few didn't they leave moments before the officers came? All of the all of these people left. There's a bunch of cars seen leaving before the law got there. And uh, it was sort of strange, you know, because his dad said he didn't see any cars. When he dropped him off. So I don't know where everybody is at. I can't say that. Yeah. But uh, it had that this stuff all had to start just about as soon as Aaron walked in the door. I would admit. Yeah. For that. But anyway, they said that uh, they picked him up and took him to the basement. Uh, that's where they started. Uh, all of them hit him. That way they couldn't decide which one really did kill him. And that's uh, that happens quite often more than yeah, so. I've, I've definitely heard that. But That's during this enough. time, they said when Russell hit him that there was blood went all across the house. So Crystal Goosby was left cleaning up the blood. A uh, few, few months later, me and, me and RJ's developed a bit of rapport. RJ named Rufus as one of the killers. He said, they're trying to drag me into something I didn't do. I turned that over to, to the detective. And uh, I'll explain that in a few minutes. But, uh, as I mean, evidence, evident people started calling. I had a young lady call and said that uh, she was talking to, she'd call Crystal, needed, she was trying to get some drugs. And, uh. She said Crystal told her she didn't have time to uh, talk to her. She was busy cleaning up a murder scene. Just like it, just. I have, you know, I and I've staved every bit of this, every bit, everything anybody's told me, I have. Oh, I bet. And uh, there was a second girl called. She needed a ride to go get some milk or diapers for her baby. And she told her, she said, I can't right now. I'm busy cleaning up a murder scene. She asked who it just was. She said, she's just so openly, willingly saying that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and she Close said, uh, she asked who it was. She said, rabbit. And she said he deserved to die. Uh, both, the, the girls, both their boyfriends was with them and heard this. 
And, uh, of course, I was giving this stuff to the detective. Well, they, Rufus and Crystal, called me on three separate occasions threatening me. And I told him, uh, I went and bought me a gun. I said, so you know. You know you touched a nerve. Yeah, I said, they stepped to me and I said, we're going to we're gonna dance. But they never said a word to him. He said he would, never said a word. But uh, after we'd seen all the evidence up there, they had everything that the, the detective had told us, the evidence contradicted. I mean, it, and they let, why did you, why do you leave a body laying on the ground for nearly eight hours? Especially if it's a supposed suicide. I right. mean, I understand getting statements, no. interviews, but he didn't have to lay there. Uh uh-uh. uh. And then, uh, Crystal, all the Crystal's interview, uh, Derek would say, like, uh, he obviously hung himself. Uh, you know, it was yes and no, it was lead questions. Oh, yeah, I believe and, it. Uh, and Russell's, they would like cover up the mic where you couldn't hardly hear. He said he'd done CPR on Aaron. You can't do CPR on a body curled up in a fetal position. Okay, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. So I was he used lied. To the that's, but, that's not how you perform. <laughs> yeah. And but I still don't know why they let him lay on the ground that long uncovered. No. Absolutely. No, there's, there's a reason behind it. I don't know what it is. But they had to, uh, they had the to make sure of, the story as best as possible to me matched. Well, see, it started coming apart. Uh yeah. actually, Bryant Dunaway called TBI. And they had to come from Chattanooga. So when uh, they got there, they were told there had been a big party and that they'd come outside and found there, which wasn't what they told us. And uh, well, that's three different versions now. Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, Mark Gore called me. He's the ADA. Started off as a nice conversation, uh, and uh, he said, well, we need to close this case. He said, we need you to agree to it. I said, they won't give you anything until you do. No. I said, there ain't no way in hell. Uh, I said, but I like my son's wallet. He said, well, I'll see if I can get it for you. But uh, he talked, you know, I, I probably talked about 25, 30 minutes, and he was losing his cool with me and you could tell he was because I was asking questions. Why this? Why that? Yeah. And uh, at the end, he said, well, look, you ain't got any choice in accepting whatever I decide. And uh, of course, I was on the point of losing mine. So I said, you know, there's always choices in life. I said, but I do have one more question. He said, what is it? I said, what did the report on the rope say? He said, "Well, there wasn't there. We don't. Uh, there wasn't no report on the rope. We don't do that in suicides." I said, "So you ruled it a suicide while his body is laying on the ground before he ever left left for Nashville." And I said, "I'll tell you one better." I said, "I've got a recorded conversation between me and Mister Sidwell, where he said he was waiting on that report, that five page report. He hung up on me." So they, he, the, uh, some ladies from his office had called a couple of times. He wanted to talk to me. I didn't have nothing to say to him. I was done with him. And uh, after I figured out what was going on, when we seen the evidence, there was this pay, a report about 80 pages. I went to looking at it. it. 40 pages of it were the text messages between me and him. And they were blowed up to like half inch, three quarter inch size letters. And uh, I knew then, you know, I tried to help by giving him the information. He told Mr. Gore he didn't understand why I was trying to give him information. I said, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Why wouldn't I give you information that somebody gave me to give you? And uh, then a couple of the people that actually went in and tried to talk to him, 
and they were told to mind their own damn business. So they already made up their mind. Oh, yeah. They already but made they, their mind up. I believe after they said, you know, they're used to people in that area accepting whatever they said. You know, they knew we didn't have the money to fight them. Yeah. From, uh, you know, and they were very much in hopes that we would cremate air. And, uh, but I thank God, you know, God provided a way we didn't have to. That's awesome. And that's but uh, at that point, I didn't talk to Mr. Sidwell up until Aaron had been gone 18 months. And I still didn't have Aaron's wallet. And I'd asked the DA for it. I'd asked him for it. He said he'd make sure it was released. To this day, I still don't have my son's wallet. Uh, I've been told there was money in it. I've been told there wasn't. So I don't know that there is, you know, there was, you know, I don't know. You weren't able to see it either? They were no, even- no, they didn't let us visually see the rope. They, uh, I mean, there's just a lot of things. Protocol was not followed. No. First of all, somewhere in all this, Hacks, Hacks family started talking to us. And he said, well, Derek and Hack are kin. I'm like, so what? So uh, first I was told that Hack was his uncle, that Hack's wife yeah. and Derek's mom were sisters, but they were actually cousins. They weren't, they weren't uncle and nephew, <laughs> but it was still a conflict of yeah. interest. You were, and yeah, I, you and were. I called them on it, but Bryant Dunaway was there. He knew he was kin to him. Bryant could have stopped this. And this is one of my bit was one of my big problems. They knew that that was a conflict of interest, but after, you know, assuming the way everybody else did, you know, they assumed we'd just go along with it and go away. Yeah. It and sure sounds like it. So uh, back May of uh, 20, I filed an FOIA to get the papers, uh, Freedom of Information. The freedom of, yeah. And uh, there's a lady called me from the executive office in Livingston. And she said, you requested some papers and uh, uh, give the case number. I said, if that's the Aaron Shane Key case, uh, I said, yeah, I did. She said, who are you? I said, I'm, I'm his mother. And she They're said, well, I, like, okay, here I've got way. two reasons. I can't give them to you. I said, okay. She said, number one, it's an open investigation because you won't agree to close it. I said, nope. Hell, freeze over first. Exactly. And uh, she said, and two... TBI has it. So it was real late in the evening and I got that call. So I called back the next morning and they gave me the lady's name and said that she worked for them as a couple of couple of days, a wait, one day a week is what it was. And uh, okay, I said, okay, thank you. Because I'd been messed with and toyed with. I had to make sure it was somebody that was actually oh, who yeah. they're supposed to be. Oh, yeah. So, uh, she called me back the same day, the next, the following week. I believe it was on Wednesday. And I may, it's Wednesday or Thursday. I do know that much. But anyway, she uh, called and uh, she asked me what my problems was with the case. And I told her, you know, I put everything out on Facebook was yeah. is exactly what I told her. And she says, well, she says, uh, I represent Overton County. So it's Overton County's attorney. Well, within days, I hear from up there that uh, they have put a gag order out that none of the officers are allowed to talk about Aaron's case among each other with their families or anything. Now, this I don't know for 100% fact. Right. But uh, well, I do why? have, I have right. family in the area that uh, know some of them and they wouldn't talk about Aaron's case. Period. But after that, uh, Mr. Dunaway called me and I tried to call him time after time after time. I never would get a recall a call back. So finally he called me and uh, asked me, uh, you know, he said, you requested some papers. I said, I did. He said, well, I can't give you anything 
until you agree to close the case. I said, I'm not going to agree to it. I said, it'll never happen. Mm -hmm. Hell freeze mm -hmm. first. I said, because the boy didn't do it. I said, but since I have you on the phone, I have some statements from people that will prove Aaron didn't do it. He said, would you share them? I said, well, yeah. He said, why didn't you share them with the detective? I said, you can't make them take them. I said, I yeah. tried. And uh, he said, yeah. He said, would you come in and meet with my detective? I said, yeah. I said, you got a Randall Slayton. He said, yeah. I said, I'd like to meet with him. I had a reason I asked for Mr. Slayton. So uh, we sat down, and uh, I could tell by looking at him, there was two of them there instead of just Randall, which was, I, I didn't have no problem. My grandson was with me, and uh, he's going to try to blow me off to start with. And then I started um, talking and telling him what I had. He said, well, you're going to share it all with me. I said, I'll give you some. And we'll see what you do with it. I said, if you put some effort in it, I said, I'll give you everything I got. Right. So uh, I give him R.J. Cox's statement. I give him a girl named Angel statement. She's the one that Crystal told it was Rabbit they killed. And uh, I give him one more. I can't remember. I'd have to look back to see. But anyway, uh, we spent about an hour and a half in there. And before we got ready to leave, he asked me to name who all was there. I named him. The last name I give him was a guy named Mark Allen Paul. When I mentioned that name, the color drained out of his face. And uh, I didn't say no more about it. Uh, but uh, we got ready to go. We'd been there quite a while. He wrote down an awful lot of stuff. Uh, he told me, he said, I ain't got no lie to tell you. He said, I'm overwhelmed by what you got. And I said, you know, it's funny. I said, I'm not even a trained detective and got all this. I said, now just think what a trained person could get. Mm -hmm. But I walked downstairs. I said, uh, I said, I'm the only voice that boy's got. And I said, you know that thorn in your side? He said, yeah. I said, if I live to be 100, I said, I'm her. I said, I'll be a thorn in your side. He said, I can't promise you nothing. I said, I'm not asking you to promise me anything. I said, all I'm asking is for you to give him the same investigation that you would give your own child. I said, because he deserves an investigation. He matters. And uh, I said, they ain't nobody throwing my child away like a tin can. And I said, basically, I feel like you guys, or they played God with my son's life. Yeah. And, uh, I said, I'm not going away. I said, I can make you one promise. He said, what's that? I said, if you can't get it done, I said, I'll keep going till I find somebody that can. And I walked out. Uh, we we uh, but During all this, we've talked about what was in the autopsy report. In the autopsy report, mm -hmm. the broke nose wasn't listed. The broke wrist wasn't listed. Uh, the four and a half inch cut wasn't listed. And I said, why is that? He said, I don't know. I said, me either. I said, but they're supposed to have done a full cranium autopsy. He said, well, it's got the weight of everything on there. I said, well, we couldn't find where his head was took apart. And I said, we looked. And uh, he said, well, I'll see what I can do. So uh, I sent him a picture of my son's wrist. You could tell it was, you could tell it was broke by looking at it. And uh, I, when I, there was a lady pointed out where I posted the picture of the rope. She said, Lisa, she said, uh, look at that rope. Zoom in on that knot. You could see a shadow. You could tell the knot had never tightened. And you could, you could tell that there's a shadow behind the rope. With my son's weight, it would have cut into that beam. And when he stepped off a place that high off the ground, it would have snapped his neck like a pretzel. I would have, yeah. And it would have jerked that rope up around his chin, been marks behind his ears. All of, just, and he did not have that upside down V. It's in every hanging case. It was not there. 
was not listed in the autopsy. They said uh, there was one gentleman told me the meth level in him was so high, he would have been rendered incapacitated. And that's what I understand. He would, and I don't know a lot about it, but I, in my mind, if that was the case, he would have never been able to put himself up there in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> Bingo. And the rope I have is approximately 47 inches long. Now we're talking 16 feet. What they have, with what was hanging on his neck, giving it just a little, I'm going to say you got in the neighborhood of 60 inches. You're talking about him hanging roughly five feet from the top of that building. They couldn't have got to him to cut him down. I mean, none of it, none, none of, of it. it adds up. None yeah. of it. And, you know, a lot of it, you know, I know, I'm inside the circle looking out and people like this lady that saw the rope, you know, she said, there's no way. And I mean, he's got a broke right hand. He, he's not tying nothing with a broke right hand. Uh, I and mean, just, it just, just the whole, yeah, it just, there's, there's nothing about that. But you know, my thing is hacking them been dealing drugs out there for nearly five decades. Uh, as far as I know, I could only find one time, and Hack was popped, uh, and I think it was 2005. He was in TDOC his custody. That's all I could find. But you've got Russell and them continually. Russell had a wreck in Jackson County, got caught with two eight balls of meth on him, and he never even went to court. They just wrote him a citation, told him to come. He never went. It disappeared. And he's and had more D, he, uh, driving on suspended every time he gets one. I know he's had four since Aaron died. And it's always first offense. They're uh, keeping, the, uh, I mean, Karen spent nine months in jail. For, uh, she got out January 27th, I think, and 20. And there was a girl in there said there was two cops go in there and talk to her, spend hours with her every day in a private sale. Why would you do that? I have a theory. Oh. I don't think, I don't think Karen could, they interviewed her the following morning. They're not supposed to interview somebody till they detox. Right. Uh, right. I mean, just nothing was protocol. Maybe they didn't know what protocol was. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how well trained. Right. Small, small right. County but still, officers there, are. I would imagine there is a certain baseline protocol to always follow, no matter what. When you before you know. Yeah, well, you know this one. I mean, uh, one of the police officers wrote out Hack's statement, went to the door, knocked on the door, and had Hack come out and sign it. Hack mm -hmm. didn't even say it. Hack was interviewed on June the 2nd of 2019. I heard that interview too. Uh, and all they were worried about was the Aryan Brotherhood. We're not afraid of nobody. We're afraid the Aryan Brotherhood's going to come. Wow. Uh, if the Aryan Brotherhood was going to come and take up, for, it would have done been done. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, nothing, absolutely nothing added up. And uh, then people started coming to me, telling me about other cases that had been ruled suicide up there. And, and I thought, man, you know, this, and this, is this in ain't the same making general sense. Area. But after I found statistics, you know, the stats up in there, that district has the highest suicide rate in the state of Tennessee. It's higher than the national average. But I also found out in the midst of all of this, in Tennessee, if you have a high school education and no felonies, you or me can be a county medical examiner. And if you have the police officer at the scene says this is a murder or a homicide or this is a suicide, then when it goes to the state level, uh, their little, they'll put their little remarks in there. When it gets to state level, don't matter what is ordered, 
they can get a third away through the autopsy and say, well, we're going to go along with what the county says. That's where it stops at. So you've got unqualified police officers determining the cause of death. Why do you even need a state medical examiner? Right. And the Tennessee well, still need that signet that that. Well, uh, they, from what we could see on the autopsy, Aaron was on the table roughly 45 minutes. You've got to undress him, clean him up. With two people, it'd take longer than that. Oh, yeah. And they were saying things that he had emphysema. Aaron walked eight or ten miles a day. He had huge legs. I mean, he walked everywhere he went. And you can't walk like that and have stuff like that. They talked about a ruptured artery to his heart. Aaron, when he was in school, played basketball, always passed, passed his medical physicals. I mean, it was, it was like the autopsy was of an entirely different body. And, uh, I mean, there's just, you can set and pick, and the more you think about it, the more mistakes you can see. But there's also, between that, there's things forming, uh, that's coming up that's showing that there there's things that ain't right that's and it well, wasn't just I, when, you, when you first told me that when we first talked that there was you know five generations of an operation there you, that you can't tell me nobody see doesn't see that they're either getting paid to turn their cheek or they're turning their cheek or they're afraid Exactly. I mean, that's the only way that would operation would be able to go on that lot. And they exactly have some hand in it. Well, uh, like I said, there's a lot of cases that have come together that that tie together. I mean, Aaron wasn't the first one that died out there. Uh, Many numerous ODs out there. uh, But still, there's. Uh, they were up doing business. Way, I mean, you never the know if they're day. out there just ruling whatever they want to rule. And see, why, uh, where, you know, to me, how do you get a supposedly trained officer with no medical training ruling on a cause of death? I thought that's what the medical examiners got paid to do. I mean, this is, you know, we're, if they're, these officers is calling the cause of death... Well, we don't need medical examiners. And Tennessee's process is a multiple choice question program. You've got four answers. And if one doesn't apply, then you go back to using a word phrase that matches in that sentence, whether it applies or not. I don't care what nobody says. That's straight bullshit. Yeah. Now, all I've wanted is Aaron's name cleared for his kids. I want his killers put away. I might, it might not get all of them. I want that place shut down. They've dealt dope in that community, wrecked marriages, turned good women out into women you don't recognize and are, aren't proud of. Women with children that won't even speak to them. Erica, her kids won't have nothing to do with her. Erica was a cheerleader. She come from a good family. They've turned these good girls out and, and made them into nightmares. I mean, I don't know how they look in, look in the mirror at themselves. I mean, they do things for drugs. They're swapped around like a like you loan somebody a pair of shoes. In my experience, they quickly become people that you would never even recognize. Exactly. And see, most of these people, Crystal's kin to Aaron on, on his daddy's side. Rufus kin to Aaron on his daddy's side. Uh, Rufus never been interviewed. Uh, I mean, Paul Sullivan. Well, that's, I mean, that's shocking as an outsider where, you know, we don't think our police are involved in shady uh, stuff. I never, <laughs> I, I, you know, I never dreamed that I could lose my child like that. Uh, giving birth to Aaron was, uh, God, it was, he is tough. He's two foot long and he's born. Uh, 
weighed eight pounds and ten ounces. But it, it was a hell having him. <laughs> but I thought that was the worst pain on earth. It don't compare to having to give them back. And then when the law tries to play you as a crazy grieving mom, yeah, I grieve. I miss my child. But I just want his name cleared for those kids in that god-awful place shut down where they can't rip no more families apart and harm a community no more. That's all I've wanted. They worried about me suing them. I ain't never had no money. I don't need money. I, d I mean, all you got to do is worry about somebody taking it away from you. I don't need that. I need time to get to sit down and try to heal as much as I can because I've been fighting for 30 months and 14 days. You and know, I've been telling you, I, I never want to be the one to say if I were in that position. But I would like to be able to think that I would be as strong as you are right now because uh, I can't imagine. I, I can't I, imagine. And I, the amount of strength that takes for you to put that aside right now and do what you need to do for Aaron. I know. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's strength, but I know I'm the only voice he's got. Yes, I was and telling somebody, you know, when they come into this world and they can't protect themselves or speak yet, you speak and you protect them. That's and right. That's and then right. you are supposed to die and they are supposed to be okay. And yeah, in situations painful. like this, you find yourself having to speak for them all over again because they can't. These, these people, they sit out there. They're still selling drugs. They're still whoring around, for lack of a better word. They're, they're still very comfy. Wreck, exactly. They're still wrecking havoc on people uh, in people's lives. And they're taking young girls and old men turning these girls out. They're destroying a and generation. I'm afraid in a situation like this that it, it's going to be more about showing the corruption rather than the evidence that shows that it wasn't a suicide. Like all these people that you were talking about coming forward and showing a pattern of corruption. I think that's the angle that our people are going to have to see it by in order to change it. They're going to have to see that the people that ruled this in the first place. Well, are oh. you know. uh, yeah karma uh back earlier this year uh crystal got indicted two counts i believe it's selling subutex i know they go to alabama and get it at a clinic down there uh i don't know uh then she got her son had a uh He's 16, had a baby with a girl that was 21. And now I'm hearing it ended up not being his. But anyway, when the baby is born, there was meth in its system. And to keep from getting a statutory rape charge, she told him where she got the dope. And it was from Crystal. So, D, I guess. CPS, I believe karma is a. And well, it gets real good. Uh, and there's some of it. You know, I wouldn't wish what we've been through. I wouldn't have wished Hat Cox to go through that. I wouldn't wish Russell or Rufus to go through it. Uh, and for whatever reason, all I can tell you is it's God. I don't hate these people. Uh, I'm not going to give up. That alone takes uh, a lot of strength because I don't uh, know if I can sit here and say I wouldn't hate every single one of those people. I don't know. Ten years ago. We wouldn't be sitting having this interview. Things have changed in my life a whole lot. And uh, and, and it's God. It's great. It's by the grace of God. I've got a, yes. got a bad mouth. Got a bad mouth. Got a bad temper. But yeah. I, you know, this has changed a lot for a lot of my perspectives. Yes. 
Uh, I care about people. Uh, these people, they get up every morning, they look their self in the mirror, and uh, life goes on like Aaron never existed. And uh, that that burns me up. It does that they're walking free. That's their baby. Selling their dope, doing kill. They're destroying the community even even further. And what gets me is the law enforcement's all right with it. The judicial system, they set them out, slap them on the wrist. Don't do this no more. I don't. And, uh, and I just I don't understand it. It's a vicious circle around here. If there was an alleged suicide and a girl came and said, he took me outside and he did this. And I watched, I think everybody's mind is asking, there were over nine people out there. You didn't scream for help. You didn't call for anybody. You just yeah, well, literally watched this man climb up this yeah. pole, tie a knot, do all of this. And you didn't try to alert Anybody in that house that could help you? They wasn't not, but see, that was it. They told that there wasn't nobody there but them two. If the law had went in the house that night, they would have been able to found the blood stains. They'd have found, yeah. they'd have found the bleach smell. It was still there when I was there on Tuesday. It <laughs> burnt my nose and eyes still bad. But uh. I it was just know. not a normal, oh, they just clean their house well, and used you know, What stuff. I was told that ever seen, like ever seen it involves a death, is supposed to be treated as if it were a homicide. Yes. You know, and you, Aaron, go back. you go they backwards. did not they did not bag Aaron's hands to see if there was uh anything on them. But you in those pictures. His hands were like Snow White, and Aaron tanned really easy. Uh, there's quite a bit of Indian in the family. Although he was a blonde, there's still a lot, you know, a lot of Indian in us, and we all tan real easy. But uh, there's nothing, everything that we were told from day one was a lie. They put on like they were doing a job. They wasn't doing doing nothing. They've got enough with what I've got. They could get. They could go to the grand jury and get, uh, you know, indictments if they wanted to. You just have to have some. They don't. I mean, want the way to. it sounds like you're just gonna have to get people in our, and go outside. Well, I'll go wherever I have to. If oh, I go, yeah, I, have whole, to go I mean, to I Washington. wouldn't want to deal with the whole state of Tennessee. I would, you know. Oh, let's begin in the, but you know the. Uh, the amount of reach these people have to allow an operation for like that to go on for so long. Is it's big. scary. It's, and say, uh, I didn't realize it was like it is. I had no idea. And no, we was, don't until you, something opens up your eyes to it. Yeah. And people. Yeah. Don't you know you say it and you think you're this can't happen to your kid. Drug addiction, uh, it knows no it knows no economic and it doesn't boundaries. Care who you are, how good of how good of a person you are, it doesn't matter. No, but that stuff can take you. And like I said with Aaron, he did do some. Uh but he back was my, always, anybody that's watching right now will, will tell you back in my day, because I I know a lot of people. I'm in this on this page. They will tell you I was the party girl back in the day. It just make you a bad person. Yeah, uh, no. And Aaron wasn't a bad person. No. Uh, you know, uh, oh hack. He told us. He said Aaron kept Russell from mistreating him and taking his money away from him. Aaron didn't like to see people mistreated. Uh and you know, in 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 following case and just listening to people, it's usually those people. The ones that are so selfless that would do anything for anybody and they get yeah. taken if and you know, him and Rufus terrible. and Crystal got into it the day before because they was picking on Kobe and Aaron told him he said, Leave him alone. He's the only out one out here that'll ever amount to anything. He loved Kobe. And uh they didn't like it because he would they he wouldn't let them mistreat him. And there's pictures of him and Colby together. 
uh, you know, they all said how much they loved him and all this, but nobody showed up at the funeral home. And that's when I knew, when I looked in Russell's eyes, he walked up on me when I was out there looking. He asked me what I was doing. I said, I'm looking. And I said, who are you? He said, Russell. And I'm like, oh, my God. I looked in his eyes. It wasn't nothing but solid black. And I said, Russell, I said, two and two ain't equal in four. He said, what do you mean? I said, Aaron didn't hang his cell. He dropped his head and looked at the ground and never would look at me in the eye again. I knew right then he was part of it. I knew it right then. He told on his cell. Uh, I'm sure there were people out there that didn't know they were going to be a part of something that, that day. Well, I believe they were, I believe they were some there that they just happened to be there. Yeah. You know, and uh, now they, just, now they're scared. They don't know what they've to set do. back all this time. Which, I mean, technically they can be uh, charged with accessory after yeah. the fact. Yes. But, you know, it's but scary, yeah. setting, setting, and not saying nothing to me makes you as guilty as the ones yes. that don't. Yes. Yes. Uh, you are a hundred percent more complicit. I, I was told you. that it possibly might be the cost of a murder trial. I was told it cost uh, sometimes in excess of a million dollars. But I said, which when you stop and think about that, having to try five, maybe nine people, you know, that's a lot. That is a burden yeah. on a county. Yeah. And I get that. But the point is, you take a job, you're voted in by the confidence of the people that you're going to do your job. Yeah. And the only thing you will see up there is where they plea bargain everything. People are bullied into taking plea bargains. And I can produce two or three people that will say that. Uh, but, you know, all I want is Aaron's name cleared. And those people, he doesn't deserve it, that to happen. No. to be on there if it if it didn't happen. Exactly, exactly. It, it doesn't. You know, at the it. end of the day, and I'm not going to say these people are on the take. At the end of the day, if some of them are, sacrifice this bunch. The ones that kill my son, there's a thousand more you can put on the street selling dope. It'll do it. But they think I'm going away. I'm not going away. God puts a life in my body. I will fight for him till the day I die. And that, I will yeah. fight for what is right. But more so, I want those people and those communities up there to be able to call law enforcement with confidence and know that they're going to come help. I want those people to have that. I loved growing up there. And you drive through there now. I wouldn't let my 39-year-old daughter walk that street by herself. That's how far. And we're talking about a tiny, beautiful resort town. Aaron was born in Salina, Tennessee. He died 10 minutes from where he was born. And they ain't nobody up there gives a good damn. And, that's so and uh, I remember when that community loved everybody somebody's house burnt they come out and help these people now they're all afraid and they turned their heads so long yeah it's got and then from my experience um you know addicts are just very selfish people and you know well, it's not second nature for them or it's not first nature and for them to think of people outside their means now they're well, yeah, you got, you got, you know, they become di very different people than what they were. Yes. Were. And uh, there, there's things up there that I found uh, during all of this that uh, police officers 100% are underpaid. They take a lot of crap. I've seen people uh, be ugly to officers. And, but oh, then yeah. you've got all this defunding stuff going on now. And officers, and my thing is, they basically say, well, why do my job? You know, nobody cares. The judge is setting them back out on the streets. Uh, when it comes to the drug community up there, they continually set these people back out on the street. 
Uh, they never serve their sentences. And you get somebody in there with a driver's license infraction, they're going to do some serious time. But these drug people were in and out, in and, and out. crazy. Uh, I mean, a little bit of that happens, but yeah, I just think the yeah. depths of that community is mind-blowing. Yes, it is. And uh, like I said, until this happened, I had no I had no idea how bad it is. But then uh, there's been a lot of families that has come together that we've talked, uh, reached out to each other. And this, whatever's going on is epidemic proportions. Uh, I think there's a lot more errands out there. Oh, there is. 100% there, so. there is. There is a lot that's been swept under the rug, a lot. And I, I didn't have no idea. I mean, cases that no, because everybody's so compartmentalized and scared and quiet. Yeah, everybody has turned into instead of community, they've turned into me, me, me. Keep your mouth shut. Yeah, it can't happen and, to us. And but it can't. Like see, it. I that feel. And see, it can happen to you. Uh, it can happen to anybody. At any, any given time, none of us is promised tomorrow. No, nope. but Absolutely uh, not. I think I need to uh, maybe if there's any questions anybody wants to ask, they can ask. Uh, yeah, but drop I think them in the comment or honestly, just head over to I have it linked in the comments um, to her group. She has a wonderful, wonderful place of information for Aaron that she is just trying to get out. And we just hope people that can catch wind of that there's just something more going on here. And I, I just really think it's going to, I hope um, you encourage more of those people to speak out. I hope they will too. Uh, I want them to all have a voice again uh, because, you know, people say don't get involved. Yes. But I will tell you something that I, after since Aaron died, I've noticed there is case after case after case up there. And nothing, I just think nothing all of those makes cases news. started communicating and stopped being afraid. We are all are going to paint a picture of such a cor corrupt little community. <laughs> oh, well, it's not. A, this is a district. This is a district. It's uh, There's seven <laughs> counties. It's the biggest district in the state. And, and that's even scarier. It's the 13th district. <laughs> but uh, the one thing I've noticed, if, you know, with Aaron's case, uh, with the Megan uh, Bowling case, uh, this stuff has not hit the news. None of this has ever been covered. The local newspapers no, don't. Know I couldn't even find. There is nothing. Uh, and what I was told. Uh, was that there was a lot of money going out to make sure Aaron's case did not oh, I believe make it. it out there. Because it Which, just doesn't fit in the And this comes plan. from a reporter outside the state. And uh, they done a little digging and because I was trying to get them to cover it. And uh, it was a Miss McCullum, a man that worked for her out of Manhattan, New York said that there was a lot of money changing hands to keep all that stuff in there out, yeah. out of the news. And that's why we are hoping that to share yeah. this video, share it. We need people from outside of that little, I mean, I'm yeah. not sure. I, I, ties like that, they could run all over the place here, you know, oh. especially in dealing with, with that stuff. Yeah. I mean, the, these ties, they, they run deep in the communities. I mean, all it's uh, going to take is that one person to say, I'm going to make this connection. Yeah, no, uh, just one to say, you know, enough's enough. It's tired yes. of young people being thrown away. Because uh, they're sitting up there comfy. They don't think oh, you, yeah, little but, old you, is going yeah. to make too much of a storm. Right. And you know, the, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Lauren Agee case, same district, Courtney Cash case. Same district. I mean, there's a pattern there. And uh, uh, we've got a little boy missing, Josh Bohannon, Caitlin Ledbetter. Ain't nobody doing nothing. 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 Uh, they, haven't, they haven't even 
written a missing persons up on Josh. No. This no, boy's been gone since June. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Caitlin Ledbetter, she died around a mile from where my son died. Some, you know, mm -hmm. nothing. And then her dad's house burns with a woman's body in the basement. I mean, it's just, it's just too much. And like to me, that's re that's so crazy. I'm not naive. I, I know it looks people, to me but like that is covering just... their tracks. They cleaning house is what it looks. Oh yeah. Like. But anyway, okay. If uh, if you haven't got nothing you want to ask, uh, I just want to make sure that people with tips and leads do not call the TBI. Call. Washington FBI in Washington. We don't want to. Yes. We don't want to mess with anybody within. Call, we uh, want to find outside Homeland, people. Uh, Homeland Security. Uh, domestic yes. terrorism. Uh, some way, you know, they got to understand. They got to understand somewhere. There's going to be somebody listen, and they're going to say, and they're going to see this, and they're going to say something's not right. Yes. I mean, because you can't even get the statistics. From the 13th district. And there's no, I mean, there's no timeline. There's no, they no. are, they tried really, really hard to keep all this information out of the, the media. There, well, I feel like. well, there ain't none of it in the media. Their no, only thing none. poor Aaron had was a little bitty obituary that the funeral home put up. That's it. I asked, I even tried asking you for a timeline and you're like, well, there's really yeah. not, and I'm just like. I mean, I mean, the police didn't even make a timeline. Yeah, uh, well, but I mean, they. That's uh, that, that, yeah. How we found, how I'm finding out who all was at the scene, who called the TBI, but they turned them away. They told the investigation was over after them driving from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, you know, they told an entirely different story. If the cops had went in the house that night, they'd have smelled the bleach and they'd have found Erica. She was hid in the house. She told a girl. The cops never went into the house. They never, never went in the house. They never didn't secure it. They didn't see no. her hanging. They uh -huh. didn't see any of this. So they were pretty much just going yep. by off of what came uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I have my theory, but, uh, I think I know a lot of what's going on, but uh, I want to, I want them to sit and wonder what I do know. Yeah. Oh. Because be nervous. I hope that you getting your word out there. Makes well, it you know, <laughs> look, poor little Laura Nagy, her what her mom went through. She uh, is crazy, and this is the same, same district attorney. Same uh, little yeah. Everything. It's same old, same old. Uh. uh you know, and when, I think uh, that it is going to take all those people uniting and showing that there's so is. much going on behind the scenes that people don't see. It's a hundred percent for, for anybody to take a look. Yeah. Uh, I've had, like I said, I've had people contact me. And that's tricky. One story of a lady at Alpine uh, said her uh, cousin was beat to death in the back door. Two guys beat him, left the baseball bat, ruled a suicide. That's Overton County. But uh I you know, I don't know. I know I want my son's name cleared. Yeah. Uh no, I want no. the ones I know that was uh, uh the ones that have basically rubbed it. Crystal has like I said, her Rufus has called me and threatened me with death threats. Norma Bowles threatened to put a bullet in my head or slit my throat. If I didn't shut up, I ain't shutting up. And, you know, they have a chance to stop and see me when I go to my son's cemetery. They don't stop. Oh, of course not. I uh, And then, uh, you know, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot I forgot to talk about. But we, uh, I'd like to say you go back. You are more than welcome to come on here anytime and say whatever you want to say. I would, uh, I'll talk to you when we're done, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, so I just, I think now we are going to make sure that this gets around. If anybody watching, um, please share. That's what we're trying to do is just make a little attention. Make them sweat up there. They're too comfy. They need to. Yeah. 
they need to squirm around and let know. Um, it may be a little old Lisa to them, but we're going to try to get a whole army behind you. <laughs> well, there's a lady out of North Carolina uh, named it Rabbit's Army. Yes. And uh, there's good. a group named Triggered Minds made a a character of a fighting rabbit. And uh, <gasps> yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, people have reached out. They really have. Uh, but see, the, you know, they know we don't got the money to do. No. If I had plenty of money, they'd be a lot of head drilling long before now. But everything right. happens in God's time. And this, uh, that's what I, I've learned. Oh, I, it's, I it's have gonna happen. done that very hard this past year myself. I understand those words more than I have ever understood them before. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, still right now, they can do the right thing. And then I can sit down. And, and grieve. And be yeah, able to go through that process. Because I, you know, I cry every day. But uh, I haven't got to just let go and feel. Yeah, it. yeah. And they, you know, they could have made it right where I could have been past a whole lot of things. But now, by now, and uh, his sister, she's uh, all it takes is one person. His sister's had it real hard. Is his kids, his son. Well, they're his kids. He wouldn't, even, he wouldn't walk up to the casket to say goodbye because he, he didn't want to cry. He wanted to be a man. Uh, you know, uh, I was the last one to kiss him goodbye. I was the last one to touch his casket. Put the first shovel of dirt on him. And none of it had to happen. They didn't have to kill him. Mm. They didn't have to kill him. But they should pay for it. Yeah, they should. Yeah, you know, I believe I was raised an eye for an eye. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, we were raised not, to uh, don't go out starting stuff. But yeah. you're going to know how to protect yourself if... if right. And see... It took the that many of them to bring. That's what back. I was just gonna say, and that's and if they, a lot for Aaron. If they had have just hurt him, Aaron wouldn't have never pressed charges on him. He wouldn't have done it. That just wasn't who he was. They pushed him in to helping him, and then they got him killed. And, they, and then he paid for it. And uh, and what that's they've done to us emotionally. They ain't got enough money in the world. You know, nothing. nothing's going to bring Aaron back. And uh, somehow, there's got to be some good come out of this. Somewhere, there's got to be something good come out of it. I really believe that you are going to be a symbol for that, that district. And I really hope that people come to you and say they feel the same thing is going on and they, they can only hide it if nobody's looking. If we get enough people looking at them, they're not going to be able to hide it for very long. I'd like to, uh, the lady set up a group. I'd like to invite anybody in that district that's got a story to tell to go to Tennessee's, Tennessee's Dark Hole. Yeah, we will put, if you want to see, uh, we it's a private group. Too. It's a private group where people, can talk, share their stories with people that understand. And uh, it's been there good. Are some people in there that feel that they have went through the same thing with the same people in the same area as, exactly. as you have, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, I, like I said, I didn't realize the extent of it. The can I didn't the, have no idea. Yeah. And, and the uh, ones you now know, is you just start to see all these spider web, these webs yeah. that go everywhere. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, when I think when law enforcement doesn't, when they break the laws that they swore they would 
uphold, that makes them no better than criminals. No. True, they're underpaid. A lot of times they're disrespected. I respect an honest police officer as oh, much me as too. I there respect are some out there that I can't, I cannot, but that does not That's, mean they're all bad. No, they're not. They're not all bad. There is a extreme amount of really, really there good officers some that out there. really go out of the way and do their job. And, and say and even in all this, you got the people above them that don't do their job, and it's just well. I talked to a a guy one day. Uh, he works for a federal agency. Worked his butt off, and uh, he said, "You know." He said, it's hard. We take build cases year, three, five years. He said, and then it goes into the judicial system and they just turn them back out on the streets. Yeah. I mean, what good are they? What are, what good are these people doing, doing their jobs? If the judiciary system's not doing their job. Yeah. But anyway, I, uh, I'm I, out. Really I appreciate agree. you I am having a one me. nation, one law person. So <laughs> I believe the oh. only way we should be divided is our postal service, school districts, and where we vote. Everything else should uh, yeah. as much as possible. But be when you same. when you have law enforcement, and we wouldn't have this happen. When you have law enforcement or ju or judges that are saying. This one deserves an investigation. This yes. one deserves an investigation. We're messing with this, and there's a little drugs in their past. And then, then yeah, they're playing or, God. They're playing God. And then, and they got to meet with the man. But uh, yeah, I'm done. I'm good. Uh, I appreciate everybody that yeah listens. I appreciate everybody's support and uh, together. And anytime you want to come on here and speak, you just give me a heads up. Okay. Because together we can build an army. Yes, we can. And you know what? That That's what I said. They're only hiding and being able to get away with this because nobody, the more people that know about it and start coming out, they're not going to be able to sit up there so comfy. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you get those that think they're above the law. And to this point, these people I'm talking about have been. Uh, like I said, I found uh, a lot of stuff that a lot of people would rather not be out there. I don't care about it. You know, you do you, I'll do me. Uh, but uh, yep. I'll do what I've got to to clear my son's name. And we will. And and dying, this video will help in that. Dying's easy. It's living without my child. It's hell on earth. Oh. <laughs> But I'm out. All I'm right. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we will, we have all the information in the comments and I will, uh, anybody that messes, I will direct them straight to your group because you will be the best person that they can come to. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All righty. Not, not. Bye-bye. Well, I thank you guys all for watching, and I hope that you guys can help us accomplish what we are trying to do here. And that is just simply, I mean, I would love it if if the Ellie would come to my spotlight page and tell me to shut the F up, and they'll take it from there. Then then that will, that would be accomplished, but it takes a lot of you and a lot of sharing and um it does. It shouldn't matter what anybody's circumstance was while they were here. It shouldn't matter what they look like or what their lives were. Um, everybody deserves the same respect, the same investigation, the same coverage, the same spotlight. This and here, you all you have to do is message us, and we will. If you are willing, we are willing. So I thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna get off here and um, head on over to. Um, Aaron's page. It is linked in the comments. Everything you need to know has been uploaded to the comments and uh, you can always message us and we'll give you the straight way over, over there. So um, thank you for watching. And we were, are going to try to do this um, as much as we can. So by all means um, come to the page, talk to us. So everybody have a good night and, uh, 
let's discuss because this is a big case that we all could be picking apart and uh, it could really help a mother. Uh, if he was, if he did not murder himself or commit suicide, he should not be remembered for that. So we need a fire guys. Let's be the fire. <laughs>